Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Journey Becoming Head Coach. As always, I'm your host, Jeff Freeman. Um, today we're going to go over a 335. Um, I like to call it a just kind of an inverted cover two look. We're going to go over that, just kind of the base looks and kind of base install over like what a day one, day two would look like. So this is a base front and it's a tight end, two back set. Um, well, obviously, you got your receivers, got one receiver to each side. Um, I'll go through kind of each individual's um, piece and how we align them. So you got your Sam or your stud. We would call him a stud for the most part. We got our anchor nose force. For those of you that watched the 425 or the 34, you'll know that that's pretty much how I call those guys no matter what. Um, anchor is always going to be our stud uh, run defender. And then same thing with our studs, always going to be a bit of run defender. Nose is going to have to be a two gap player or is going to have to slant depending on where we want to go. And then our force is usually our faster, quick, quicker defensive lineman that can also do pass rush. So then we got our Will, we got our White, Mike, free safety, corner, corner, bandit, falcon. So it's a 3-5 or a 5-3 or however you want to kind of de 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 delineate it. I like to call it a 3-3-5 three, three, because you got three D linemen, three linebackers, five people that can play some kind of defensive back. These are your hybrid players. They have to also be able to play safety, especially when you eventually want to get to some cover four out of this. And the only way to get to cover four is if these two guys are athletic enough to really drop and be that fourth uh, safety. Because you have the ability to drop into cover three out of this relatively with ease. But if you ever want to get to cover four or any other kind of little tricky coverages, you've got to be able to have athletic hybrids here that can drop into a safety position. Now, as far as base, what everybody is, is the stud is also a tough gap uh, C technique player or a C gap player. Our anchor is going to be a B gap pinch player. Nose, to be quite honest, again, the way I always try to treat my uh, three man fronts is obviously, best case scenario, we want him to be able to take the center and drive him into the quarterback. Do we always get that guy? No. So sometimes we'll play games like out of this front, most likely. We would probably depend on what this fullback is. We might slant him to him, we might slant him away. In any case, you know, it all kind of depends. So we kind of tell, for the most part, when we put this in, our nose has to be able to do one of three things. He's either got to be able to slant, two gap, or misdirect and have some decent counter steps. And again, our four is also a two gap player. Will is the C gap. Again, he's playing off edge. <clears throat> as far as that's concerned, our Mike is C gap to C gap. He's fast flow. And our free safety is also a fit player. He's an alley player out of this defense. And we'll get to kind of how that looks. That's our base five man front against the run. Again, all gaps are filled. Mike's able to free flow wherever he needs to go. Okay, very base, very simple, very easy um, front out of that concern. Now, as far as our free safety, free safety is going to read the tight end. Going to kind of make that really easy. If the tight end is going to down block on the stud or the anchor, then similar to what you teach any other linebacker, he's going to fill. He's going to fill and meet him right off the bat. Try to fill that gap because he's down blocking for a reason. If he's going to scoop block, then obviously you're going to attack his you know, inside shoulder in that regard. So he's going to take more of a scraping look on that tight end. And then if the tight end's releasing out, or if he's trying to set the edge, same thing. He's going to help fit in the alley. And then depending on our pass coverage, which we'll get to, base pass coverage, he'll have vertical number two, which we'll get to here in just one second. So... As far as the receiver side, with these guys, these guys are look like they're supposed to be in press, you know, press man coverage, pre-snap. By the time they get to the snap, these guys should be basically about four yards inside, reading last man on the line of scrimmage. Again, if you watched any of the 3-4 or even the 4-2-5, I do this with my backers a lot. We try to, again, disguise things. And again, if you're looking at this and you don't know what we're doing, you would just think this is a basic, you know, cover two look because these guys would look like safeties. These guys would look like the corners. And it looks like we're in like a, a five, two kind of front or a three, four kind of look because you might misidentify the free safety as a linebacker. You might, depending on how deep he is and whatnot. And then your our mics in here. So again, they're going to disco tech inside and they're reading last man. So again, they get that down block. They get a down block there. They are coming hard to set the edge. So, in this defense, the one little kind of flaw to it is any kind of play action, or to be quite honest, if you face a really good RPO team, you're going to have to adjust this, because if they see you creep, 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 
and then they give that little down block or their run block and he comes to fill, they could throw a little quick hitch or spots. So you do have to be aware for those kind of adjustments. But we're talking base, base look out of this as far as what we're looking at. Disco tech, sit inside about four yards inside the receiver, read that tackle. Whatever that tackle does, he pass sets, we'll get to the pass coverage. But as far as reads, you know, they get any kind of down block and obviously come fill off. You got boot counter reverse. They come outside, help set the edge and really defeat that on the inside. You got option, this guy automatically has pitch. Same here, guy automatically has pitch. We got three guys on the dive, we got three guys on the quarterback, we got two guys on the pitch. Corners are late to the party on everything. These corners should be the last man doing anything. We should literally, it's D-line, linebackers with our free safety, Falcons and Bandits are coming in late, and then our corners are the last little wave. So, a little bit of a front there. Um, again, Disco Tech and Sit, read the tackle, pass set, we'll get to that, but as far as run reads again, and then they get a kind of an ISO block. They're going to come and sit and make sure and then pursue. So boot counter reverse, help set the edge, outside contain for our Falcons and Bandits. So as far and same thing goes the other side. doesn't matter which side it is um, as far as that's concerned. Um, our Mike Backer has the number two vertical pretty much uh, away from the front. So he's looking for backside number two. If there is no backside number two, then he's dropping to the deep middle. Again, this also gives you that Tampa two or that cover three kind of look when if it's a pass set and there's no number two receiver over here, he's going to sink, 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 and sit and look for any kind of crossers coming up the middle to reroute. So again, kind of makes it easy for him. If he doesn't see a number two, he's going to look for a number two, any kind of number two vertical. He's not going to react to anything going out there. He's looking for something coming up. So if anything's kind of like this little maneuver, anything like that where he's trying to help with any kind of pass blocking and then releasing, he's looking for a number two vertical coming out. If there's no number two vertical, sit to the middle. Okay, Real easy stuff on that. Real easy for the pass set in that regard. Uh, on wing adjustments, if you ever have to have a wing, or if there is a wing, again, you know, if there's a wing out here, you ever get a wing T team, or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> again, your Falcons just gonna be basically just outside of that in about a four by four alignment outside. Still leading the last man on line of scrimmage. You don't wanna read the wing because the wing might be doing any kind of deep motion, fly motion, anything like that. So he's still reading the tight end, reacting to him, still setting the edge, still helping with outside. So a little bit of adjustment to a wing set on that front. Pretty simple, pretty easy stuff on that, in that regard. Um, our corners are gonna start on the, if this was the middle of the field, corners would start on the hash, and then they're gonna end up roughly right um, outside the hash belt, you know, I would say splitting the hash and the number one. So the number one's out here, hash is right here. He's gonna sink to about there just before the snap. His job is not get beat over the top by the number one. Same thing over here, sit, don't get beat by the number ones on the outside. Again, very easy stuff. They have vertical number one, whatever that is. Whoever that most outside receiver is running a vertical, that's who they're looking for. Okay? <clears throat> so, out of this basic cover two look, and I call it cover two just because, again, you have that two deep safety look even though they're corners. So when we're looking at pass sets, everything else is pretty much the same if you were gonna try and say it's a cover two look. So your will gets that pass set, forces pass rushing, stud's gonna sit and reroute, then these guys are gonna to drop to the hook to curl. These guys are gonna sink on the flat until it's threatened, over the top, sit towards the middle, um, banjo hook here, and then we're gonna sit and we're gonna sink and we're gonna sink, okay? Free safety's got vertical number two. So if this tight end pushes vertical, he's picking him up. Corners have vertical number one. Free safety has vertical number two to the tight end side or to the side with the most receivers. That's where he sets. So for example, if this was this look, then our free safety would be over here. And what we did with our Sam and our Will is we attached them to the Bandit and the Falcon. So no matter what really kind of happened on this, if they tried to set this into the boundary, our free safety just moved over. 
So again, we, we adjusted, he adjusted to the strength of the formation and the threat of the receiver. So it'd be the same thing if they try to line up in some kind of trips formation, then the free safety would move out and line up out here. Still lining up, still would have the number two vertical. Now the mic would carry the number three. So that's how we would adjust to trips. If we needed to, if a team wanted to run trips. So again, he would have the number two vertical, that's his read. Real simple, real easy stuff. So um, again, the free safety's job, if he tried to go out, he would try to rob that. If he's going vertical, he would attack that and not let him push vertical. And then if he would release inside, obviously he would harass and pass him off to the mic as they would go across and the mic would pick him up towards the middle of the field, assuming he had no vertical number two threat. So again, it's kind of one of those things where you got to read, you got to understand when someone comes in your zone, they're your man, as long as you know that there's no other man over there. So again, we have that basic front look. There's no number two vertical. He could pass him off and basically, you know, rob to the middle of the field with the tight end. So again, just kind of sitting, following the tight end, no matter where he goes. It's almost like a man concept. It's like a cover two man using your free safety as the man on the number two. And that's where also this could get tricky when you get into doubles and he's got that number two, if he pushes vertical, he's got to get to him. But that's where your will is a big key in the banjo hook. So let's just say they have some kind of twins look over here. He widens, he gets that pass, he's pushing vertical. He's got to reroute him to give the mic time to get over to that vertical threat. So again, you need a fast mic and your stud and your will or your Sam and your will, whatever you want to call them, need to be really good rerouters. Otherwise, this defense is going to struggle. So again, it's personnel based. Can't necessarily just run this with anybody. You got to make sure you got the personnel for it. But again, that's pretty much, in my opinion, any defense. You got to make adjustments. I can't tell you we've switched from a three-four to a three-five to a four-three to a four-four to a five-two. We've moved. We've switched based on personnel, but kept the same virtual terminology. If we wanted to switch to a four-man front, that's fine. That's now a D lineman. That's now a DN. These guys are ones and three techs. The, the terminology stays the same. We just adjust their gaps and responsibilities based on the personnel we get. So, and that's one thing about high school. You gotta, you gotta teach what you get. You don't get to choose, you don't get to pick. So that's one of those things you gotta be able to adjust on the fly. And that's where one of those things is personally as a head coach, you gotta be continuously a learner and you gotta understand how the game is changing and moving along. This was a really good defense a few years ago. Now against RPOs. I mean, I don't know, I haven't used this defense in a while, so I couldn't tell you if it would be really good against RPOs, to be brutally honest. Against any kind of old school offense that wants to just, you know, power, 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 play action, you could get away with it. Wants to run, you know, down, trap, backer, all that stuff, wing T, it'd be good against that kind of team. Against an RPO spread team or just an RPO team in general, I don't know, because with these backers that are cheating in, if you give them a run read, they're supposed to sit and fit, so you can get them on that. So I don't know how good that would be against an RPO team. Now, granted, if you don't play that many RPO teams, you can just scheme it per week and be like, no, we're not. We're going to just revert this back to corners and safeties, and we're going to make an adjustment for the week. This is something that we had as a package. We didn't use it as our entire defense. We use it as a package defense. We got, you know, we're just going to call this, um, we used it as Bronco many, many years ago. Um, back at the school I was at about three, four years ago, we used it. Um, it was a really good defense for us, really good against the run, and especially at the freshman JV level, it was a good way to introduce them to theories of cover two, especially when you're working on trying to teach these guys to sink, 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 sink. Like if this guy pushes vertical, don't stop sinking until you get some kind of threat in the flat. And what we meant by threat don't just pop up because he's out there. Pop up when he catches the ball and tackle him for, you know, two to three yards. We'll give up two to three yards. That's fine. They want to try and dink and dunk us all the way down? Fine. Two to three yards, we'll take. Ten to twelve, not so much. So sink, sink, sink until the flat is thread. So it gives them that really good idea of how to understand that. So we really liked it when it came to that. And again, when it came to Mike linebacker drops, he would open away from the tight end because we wanted to make sure he saw any kind of number two coming out on the outside. So if there was a number two out here, let's just say they line up again and that doubles, he would open up looking at that number two. 
And again, if you're talking about any kind of exchanges, he's looking for any kind of number two vertical. So if they got any kind of out, deep slant, or skinny post kind of thing, he's helping with that number two vertical. So again, your backer is going to pick up that out route, and your mic and your corner are going to pick up that number one vertical, who essentially kind of becomes the number two vertical as he continues to come through. So you have two to take on that vertical, and you have two, you have one to help with this vertical on the front side, depending on what he's doing. And you have one to help with the vertical on this side. But again, if he's running a skinny post, chances are these guys aren't also running posts because then you're gonna have people running into each other. Now, you could get a drag, that's fine. Free safety's gonna carry it. You could get a hitch, that's fine. You could get a go route, that's fine. You get a go route, corner's got it over the top. You get an out route, Again, you have a stud and a free safety helping with the Y. So you pretty much are, in a way, almost like the cover seven I talked about, you're almost bracketing one receiver with two players at any given point. Not all the way through, but at any given point, you might have two players getting bracketed minus the flats. Because obviously the flats are going to sink, 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 and once it's threatened, they're going to go attack that you know, from the, out, uh, from the inside out, use the sideline as a helper force them to the edge and kick them out of bounds if they have to, or make the tackle. Obviously, don't let them get up inside and get up and get up the field as fast as they can because these guys might take a while for pursuit. So attacking, if he catches that ball, attack him on the outside, force him to use the sideline as an extra partner, and get him outside. And knock him out of bounds or make a, or make a clean tackle. <clears throat> as far as just basic blitzes, well, you know what? We won't go to blitzes because that's going to be a little that's going to be a little more confusing, I think, for everybody. So, again, this is just a basic install of a basic cover two invert. What I like to call an inverted cover two. Some of you might put in the comments it's not inverted. It's a totally different style of defense, and that's fine. You know, everyone can disagree. You know, that's what is nice about these kinds of platforms, things like that. Everyone can disagree to agree and everything like that. So, but as far as if you get spread, which is what everyone's kind of going to now, you know, a lot of people are moving to spread. Now, if it's pistol, we're going to go to the throwing strength of the quarterback for the free safety, just to kind of give you an idea um, out of that look. If, again, if it's back, if it's back prefaced, if the back ends up lying over here, we might go to the back or away from the back. It honestly kind of depends on if that back is a threat. If that back likes to run bubbles and arrow routes and out routes and he's a check down kind of guy, then we probably will line him up towards the back. If he's more of just a blocker, then we're probably not going to bother lining him up to the back. We're just going to keep him to the strength side of the quarterback. So it kind of depends on what this back is and what do they use it for. Again, if he's a guy that's going to do a lot of this, He's going to do some of this and go motion out and be another receiver. Then, yeah, we'll put that free safety over the top of that running back. But if he's just a guy that's going to sit there and block for the most part because they're running slide protection, everyone's going this way, and he's just the inside-out guy, and he's just blocking 99% of the time, then we're going to put our free safety to the throwing strength of the quarterback. Which way does he like to go? Does he like to throw to the right or does he like to throw to the left? So same scheme, same idea, except now obviously our stud and our will are going to apex, last man line of scrimmage in that. Our, uh, <clears throat> our backers are not necessarily going to line up anymore outside of there. They're going to more still go with that kind of maybe three to four yards inside and sit there. And yeah, you know, some of you might, well, especially on the boundary side, it's okay for him to cheat in because if you got the boundary helping you, he's only got so much room to work with to get any kind of throw. So again, we have leverage. You can't get the slant off out of here. So you have to run some kind of fade, which is fine because that runs right into our corner. So again, we have three to cover two over here. Similar principle. Now we might tell the Falcon to still kind of stay head up or maybe be just inside. Because again, if you got more room, we don't want to give that number one receiver too much room to make a catch and get up the field. So again, still similar premise. But on this side, now we would have three to cover two. Now again, if we're bringing a blitz, say we're just bringing that, we're just bringing the, you know, the stud off the, off the line. 
still have three covering two, still have three covering two. If you want to bring the will, we still have three covering two, because remember, the mic opens to the number two away from the free safety. So depending on if it's passed, the nice thing about this defense, if everyone gets a run read, you got nine going to the run. If you get a pass read, if, if you're not blitzing, you got eight guys dropping. So at any given point, even if you bring one guy, even if you bring a stud, a mic, a will, one of these guys, you know, a falcon or a bandit, if you just bring one and you get a pass read, you got seven dropping in coverage automatically. There is no, you know, there is no confusion, there's nothing. Everybody gets a pass read and you're not running anything, everybody drops. You got eight guys dropping. Everyone gets a run read, you got nine guys to the run. Again, these guys should not get beat deep. They got the number one vertical over the top. So again, it makes it really easy to get that. And that's where I'm saying nowadays with the RPOs, this is where this gets tricky because if everyone gets a run read, like just a basic, you know, just a basic inside zone principle, you know, you get that basic inside zone principle here and they're reading him and he gets that read and comes off. Now you could get a little bubble and now you're one-on-one -on -one with the corner. So that could cause some issues if you get that just simple RPO bubble out of that. Because he's getting that run read, he's there playing tough technique on the C gap, he comes down and sits, he throws, now he's got to try and catch him. And he's got a bad angle because he's came up on the line of scrimmage. Could happen the same thing on the other side. Now granted, a little bit easier on the boundary side to use leverage with the sideline. But still, they're going to get, you know, five, six yards out of that, depending on how athletic your Will linebacker is. So, again, it's scheme, it's personnel. Can this Will linebacker come up to the line and respond to an RPO bubble to the boundary? Can he do that? If he can't, you might have to, you know, switch this up and essentially put either him in the box and put your F outside and do more of a traditional look, have the corner over the top, and let him be the C gap. He's going to check B gap and then go. Now you still got two on two, and your mic can help free flow. You can do something like that. You can move your free safety over. You can play games and move guys around. It's just a matter of, again, knowing what your personnel is. So a lot of different movement, but as far as base goes, again, RPOs could be a little, could give this defense a little bit of a trick if you're going to run this kind of inverted cover two look that I've seen some schools run and we've run in the past. But again, very good basic defense, I would say, for any freshman, junior level, or JV defense. Varsity, it's a good package to have. Uh, just because, again, it gives you a different look, it gives your corners a different look, and it gives the uh, offense a different look. If you're able to invert like this and give a version of a nine-man look without having to worry about, you know, RPOs. If you've got a team that doesn't run RPOs, you can scheme this all day. So... I really like this defense against a non-RPO team. And some of you might be saying, oh, no, you can run against RPOs. You just got to have this, and that's fine. I haven't seen it yet work against an RPO team. And how much have I played it against an RPO team? Not much. I've seen it get played against RPO teams, and it gets beat a little bit just because, like I said, when these guys pinch and they come and they are able to make that read, if they turn into reading these linebackers instead of reading these linemen and this backer comes off, you got – little bit of trouble especially if you start running actual passing routes out of the RPO so if they get again they want to run inside zone the opposite way you know and they're just head up and they're blocking they got their two double teams and they're going you know and this guy's on the other side and they get that run read and he comes up he's slanting now he's gonna drop with that slant you got the out route or if he stays up you got the slant because that corner is supposed to be over the number one vertical so again you could get that slant and sneak it in there. Now, of course, if you have your free safety to the strength, a little bit more covered on this side. But again, if they're supposed to run fit, he's going to take a step towards that run fit before he goes to the pass play. So that's where I'm saying the run reads for these three, even though you got pretty much four on two, if you don't make that correct read or if you get caught, you could end up giving up you know, anywhere between five to ten yards, depending on how athletic these receivers are. So again, it's a really good basic defense. Um, I like it as a package. I like it as a beginning teaching tool. I think it has a lot of potential. And again, like I said, you can tweak it and get into some cover three and some cover four. 
If that's something you guys want to see, I'd be more than willing to dive into it. Kind of had to make a short video today. Um, just a, a slight update. Today's kind of our last day of practice. We're taking JV and freshman pictures today. Um, it is 12.48. We start pictures at 1. So I'm running up there to get these guys their gear and let them take some pictures. And then, you know, we're going to be done. We're a smaller school. Um, and we had just had a lot of kids and students and parents look at it and go, hey, well, purple tier, swim, cross country, all these ones can go. Football, maybe we'll be able to go. So we'd rather put our student in a sport that's going to go. I get it. doesn't hurt my feelings. Um, does it suck? Of course it sucks. But there's not much I can really do about it. So I tried to make a quick just intro video to a, a version of a 335 that I've used before. Um, I'm probably going to do a 335 stack next week. Um, or I might go dive more into uh, some of our quads looks that we got coming up from our from our spread off from our spread package. So um, again, thank you so much for subscribing. Again, this is slowly starting to gain some steam, which I appreciate. Again, I didn't expect anything crazy to happen overnight. Um, so again, I appreciate the love and support that I have been getting. Um, feel free to leave some comments down below, things you like, things you don't like. Because um, again, I can't get better without any kind of a, you know any kind of comments or anything like that. So please let me know what I can change and what I can adjust. Remember, be great, push limits, hold the line. Have a great day.